Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We're back to our meeting. We uh, we convened at five, and we had two we we had two interviews um, for the direct collector treasurer position. Uh, we had the interviews. Uh, we finished those up. Um, we did a little couple things, but. Um, at uh, 630 we are scheduled for uh, Steve Benjamin the fire chief to review his budget Stephen take it away mister thank you appreciate you taking some time to talk with me the budget for this year isn't changed appreciably a lot since last year we've got a couple of things um, that we've added in I'll just go down line by line uh, the public safety complex complex expenses line item asking for Another $1,900 a year, and this is somewhat of a spitball in terms of covering the uh, phone system, the fees for the new phone system. It's mm -hmm. got more functionality than the old one, uh, uh, VOIP, mm -hmm. and we've identified that the bills that we're getting now still aren't completely hammered out, but it is going to cost us a little bit more every month. And in compounding that, I put down a seven and a half percent increase in the total budget or nineteen hundred dollars to cover that um, been talking with uh, Cindy Bennett about that monthly figure that she gave me compared to what we were paying previously and that's out to that uh, that delta we're still working on that working down uh, the credit department wages in the last several years uh, and this is the part time Wages, all, all force. Uh, they get paid when there are fire calls. Last several years, I've had two or three um, reserve fund transfer requests, specifically in the last half of the fiscal year, uh, to cover that. And um, undershooting what we did um, as an average for prior years, trying to be hopeful, but. Um, I think the time's come to raise that line item. I've asked for $4,000, which would be almost a 20% increase. Um, but typically, we've had to add between three and $5,000 a year to the uh, budgeted amount. Um, so that's my, uh, that's my estimate. Now this year, uh, we are on track for the calendar year, December to December, which just ended, we were about 25 calls over previous calendar year. Uh, fiscal year remains to be seen where we are, but uh, we are on the increase. Last year we had a little bit of a reprieve, but uh, calendar year 2016 was a busy one. It's looking like um, 18 was just about there, and 19 it was a little quiet, but um, it's starting to get busy. It's funny, once the students come back, they get uh, more active. The um, fire department part-time wages for Lieutenant Olmstead, uh, the admin assistant, because of an increase in public records requests, we've seen a lot of that activity in the last 18 months. Uh, also, the increased administrative work for the OSHA rollout that we've had to absorb. Um, Heidi and I are kind of splitting that in terms of the, the time allocated, but still, She's been working, quite frankly, more hours than she's getting paid for. So uh, asking for another $670 a year to give her a couple more hours a year and uh, a couple more hours a week, I'm sorry, to, um, to accomplish those tasks. And um, with any luck, that will give her the flexibility she needs to keep track of these things and also absorb the uh, the next round of tasks that's inevitably going to come up in years to come. Uh, she's been on board for several years and hasn't had an increase in time mm -hmm. to uh, compensate for uh, the increased workload that we've got. The next um, <clears throat> one, um, fire department expense, asked for some monies for physicals. It's my understanding that that may not be necessary but I'm still waiting for a confirmation from the appropriate party. So I will leave that up to your discretion as to how that gets handled officially on the books. Um, but 
if I get the um, if I get the documentation that I need uh, to satisfy the powers that look over my shoulder on the state level, then those funds are not going to be needed. If I could, Mr. Chair. Sure. So, uh, uh, Steve, thanks for the thanks for the work on this. The the total value here is based on the total department. So the six thousand dollars is physicals for everybody with who turns out, who can turn out. Six thousand dollars would cover ten physicals. Yep. And those ten physicals would be allocated to we've got more than ten people that are interior qualified. Right. But given the expense and the nature of the circumstances, mm -hmm. I didn't want to say, okay, all 14 people that are interior qualified yeah. are going to get the fiscals and that's going to be it. I wanted to start with 10 yeah. and then we could phase some more in. Okay. As I had spoken to a representative from Maya, um, at the time that that conversation had happened, she had advised me that if the physicals were scheduled at 1st of February, we would have a little bit of a grace period to get them accomplished. But they want, at that time, they wanted to see some action on getting them, sure. getting them booked. Yep. So I wanted to start with that. Um, and depending on how the year went, if anything broke, what have you, certainly our, right. my budget could absorb some of the others. That's so where that figure came from. If I could, Mr. Chair, we'll follow up. This this arrangement here becomes annualized or becomes rotating with staff over a, a recurring period of time? Or is this one time? One time. The way that the, um, the, way that the SOPs are written for the department that we are going to implement to coincide with the OSHA implementation, yeah. um, we're in the process of doing that anyway. So this was one of the convenient things that happened as a result of this, um, is the physicals occur once for each <coughs> firefighter. Mm -hmm. Every year, they're going to have to produce a letter from their physician saying that they've had a physical and their, their ability to conduct firefighting work and to be a firefighter, that has not changed from the previous year, appreciably, in that physician's opinion. So if Timmy's in great health, and his doctor says he's in great health, unless he has some sort of an issue where his physician says, you are not in the same health as you were last year, considering your age, no need for a physical. And quite frankly, given the, the nature of the department and the cost of the physicals and so forth, if somebody has that sort of an event, chances are they may not want to continue in that capacity on the department. So it, it's essentially a one-time cost and possibly a two-time, but the, to get us over the hump with all the physicals, that's what the request is for. Everything else should be absorbed in the normal budget. And is this separate? So as I'm looking at the proposed budget for 2020, uh, if I could, Steve, you're talking about this as an expense line. Is this in addition to the request for the special town meeting warrant? No, it is one and the same. Got it. And given... Um, challenges and, and me communicating late last week. Yep. I just decided over the weekend that I'd cover my bases. Got it. And I, I couldn't get a hold of Sherry on, on Thursday and, and double check on that. So that is only one $6,000 request. Okay. And do you want it in the annual budget or do you want it at the special? I understand that there's a fluid nature to the February 1st part. Well, if I can get my uh, confirmation that the physicals are not something that uh, we are obligated to do sure. by law. Right. Um, it's something that could wait till <clears throat> the budget cycle. The budget cycle. I, um, I see, the only reason I say it is I see this is somewhere in the world there's an office with 200,000 volunteer firefighters out the door by February 1st, and that doesn't make any sense to me. And that was part of the part of the conversations. Yeah. Um, with my peers at, at chiefs meetings and so forth mm -hmm. about how, how, how do we accomplish this in six months, which was essentially what the window was from awareness to implementation. Exactly. And, um, no, go ahead. So, so what, what Chief Benjamin is, a, um, is talking about, the state of Massachusetts has, um, the Department of Labor has basically adopted um, OSHA regulations, one 1926, 
subparts, the entire thing. Um, basically, what they were saying, what, what we've been told, is that Massachusetts municipal workers, higher education workers, et cetera, were at a two times greater risk of injury um, than people in the private industry and in other states. Massachusetts was one of the only states that didn't um, had adopted the the OSHA regulations. So, so still um, in the private in the in the public sector, OSHA is not going to be coming in to be doing inspections. It's still going to stay with the Department of Labor. Mm -hmm. um, but now they're going to be following as guidelines the OSHA 1926. So things are things are going to change a little, change a little bit. Hopefully for the better. Um, so so meaning, in unfortunately, fire departments are usually some of the things that have the most um, problems because of the nature of their the way they do business. But now you could ha ask the uh, Department of Labor to come in. Um, request them to come in to review your equipment or whatever, and they would go through everything with an eye towards the OSHA regulations. And and as as a, an inspection, they don't they don't they don't uh, write you up for deficiencies or whatever, but it gives you an opportunity to to address those deficiencies before a problem comes. So basically, they're getting out of the law writing business and doing back more working with people exactly. working with to make people safer so mm -hmm. so that's what the whole OSHA that's why we're talking OSHA because if 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 you were or did know anything on the municipal side municipal was not covered under OSHA mm -hmm. right. it is now it is now through the Department of Labor exactly and they're still they're still hammering out details you know, one of the most popular ones was fall protection right. According to OSHA, if you're working on a house, you've got to be tied off to that house. Well, if the house happens to be on fire, that's not a good strategy. Do. Yeah. And, and that, was, that was easy for them to work through. But in, in, the, um, uh, in the grand scheme of things, you're exactly right. right. These, are, these are good things. I hope to make it safer. And at the end of the day, we all want to go home to our families and the way we started off the day. And we've got an obligation to offer that to our employees. Absolutely. Just have to work through that process and um, eliminate where there's a couple of conflicts here and there, and then also make sure that we understand exactly what they mean, because there's Absolutely. always discussion of yeah. these sorts of things. Perfect. All right. I think Elliot actually had a question. Mm -hmm. There's, uh, there's actually a couple things. I'm wondering uh, on the increase in wages because of the projections that like you've got, you're expecting to have increased calls uh, this year. I'm wondering if this is something, uh, if is it something that is possible that we might be able to in the future uh, mitigate a bit uh, with some kind of like education classes? Can we do some kind of safety courses that might instruct say all the people on cliffside somehow if they can get some kind of rent bonus or something to mm -hmm. to go through this course so they don't leave their pot on the stove and, and let it right. set yes. the fire alarm what's off. your call increase category and yeah uh, and i can educate on that. it's uh, we've what we've done is we've worked through the uh, through management at the <coughs> complexes and that's been somewhat of a challenge Concerned with that, um, but specifically the way that those systems are um, are installed, if you burn your bacon on the stove, you don't necessarily set the alarm off that sends the fire department <coughs> until you open the door to the hallway to the common space in the building, and that's what sends the fire department. So we've we asked one of the apartment complexes to draft out uh, a simple letter for all tenants and their legal team went through it for about three weeks and um, sent it out and we noticed no change in the behavior. Um, it's, it's, 
It's also an even split between those nuisance alarms and some that aren't necessarily a nuisance. Mm -hmm. As we're, we're starting to enforce the, uh, the state laws for alarm systems in those apartment buildings, we're being made aware of many situations where there were some close calls and before the fire department was never called. Mm -hmm. But now we're, we're finding, yeah, somebody did um, leave a pot on the stove and yeah, the, the cabinet did start on fire a little bit, but they got it put out and uh, didn't go any further. But if somebody had been five steps away, it would have. So we're fortunately, many of our calls um, are not the, you know, the, the classic, you know, the kid playing with matches. Yeah. We've got a good program in the schools to teach fire safety. Um, we don't have very many, knock on wood, um, careless outdoor burning calls and, and brush fires out of control. That's been pretty well policed. Nobody's perfect, but that's gotten better. Um, it, it's a great idea, and we're always looking for ideas, but it's a moving target on that, on that part of the population. We're, we're willing to listen to anything, and we try to have a constant communication with management also about what we could do, how we could avoid some of these problems. Um, and it's just one of those things that's it's challenging to pin down, because you have almost a brand new population every, every six months, every 12 months. Does that represent the biggest chunk of, like, of the increase, if you had to categorize it, is it within? The apartments as opposed to like other it's about residences. about 50 percent is that and the other half would be just residential alarms just the nuisance alarms the carbon monoxide detectors that folks had to put in and they're old so they're chirping and people call because their carbon monoxide detector is going off and that's the right thing to do right but Better it's just you know it's old it's obsolete it's the it's the obsolete chirp instead of the get out of your house chirp it's okay, we'll still go. Uh, it's important to do that because every couple times you go, and it's not it's something. A valid call, yeah. Um, and it's not that we're talking a humongous amount of money, um, but it's just, you know, the, 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 the call, the number of calls are creeping, and you know, auto accidents is probably another um, tailing, um, tailing factor that's increasing. We've had one of the police officers and I were, were commenting um, that Bull Hill Route 116 intersection, um, there was a period of time where we had the same exact accident for three or four weekends in a row. Mm -hmm. okay. Same time of day, same number of cars, same scenario, and almost the same cost. So with, with increased traffic and maybe some uh, less attention paid while people are driving, that tends to be a, a common underlying theme um, we're getting more one of these getting in the way maybe yeah. that's been known to happen yeah. you know, we have we have some more of that so it's it's one of those things <clears throat> excuse me that at the end of the year if I'm under with that budget line item I'm very pleased because that means that there hasn't been as much of a need for our services um, but uh, we've been lucky we haven't had any real major fires this year um, could change uh, certainly And you also mentioned uh, about the possibility of the, uh, the OSHA item, the physicals, mm -hmm. of it not being put on. Is that if we don't have to cover them, or is that an alternate funding source you're talking about? The, the way that I'm understanding it, that um, there have been, I'll say, four different positions on this same mandate that have been put out in writing from various organizations, whether they are uh, professional organizations of fire chiefs or um, municipal organizations, um, what have you, on the physicals aren't required for this category of people, the physicals aren't required unless you're hired after this date, and what, um, since I put this process in place, even before all these uh, all these positions came out. Um, what I'm hoping to do is get a confirmation that from from the state, the enforcing 
body for this, that the, uh, the physicals are not going to be a requirement for a fire department like ours, and I can rely on a firefighter's physician to give them the okay that in that physician's opinion, they're of a physical condition to be a firefighter and to wear the to wear the air pack to be on a respirator and to uh, to do that work so that's my hope if I can get that and still make sure that our people are are covered and that in a professional's opinion they're okay to do the work then we won't have to pay for the six hundred dollar physical per firefighter and we can just have each firefighter submit the letter from their physician when they get their physical every year. And that's only confirmation from the state, correct? That's correct. It's good. Department that's of Labor. That's my... True. But um, that's, that's the strategy, to make sure that we're doing the right thing, but we don't have to spend anything that we don't have to spend. Thank you. Um, Elliot, anything else? These are the separate uh, capital for the exhaust. Correct. <clears throat> Have we had uh, claims so far from exhaust, or has it been, has it been noted as a problem? There have been complaints, and the um, that the fire department building is kind of unique in that at the time it was built, it was technically supposed to be built per NFPA requirements as a, as a fire department building. Um, and at the time it was built, one of those exhaust removal systems was a requirement by the NFPA. There was an exhaust fan in the building, but it's not as positive a tool to remove the exhaust, and it's also much less efficient, specifically this time of year, when we've essentially got to blow all the heat out of the truck bay and then warm it back up again. Um, it is an expensive item. I can't say that there's going to be a quick payback on it uh, monetarily, but um, there would be an incremental savings in heating in the building. Um, there would be a definite improvement in health in the building and also I have no idea what's going to happen if we get the Department of Labor in there and they identify that the station doesn't have an exhaust removal system um, I don't know if they're going to say that yes this is one of those items that should be put in or they may say you know, no but as it stands now it doesn't meet uh, the National Fire Protection Agency if, you, if we had this installed, would you be planning to remove the old fan or cover, like do some kind of cover it up as extra insulation for the summer year? Or? We could. We could. I wouldn't want to remove it completely because in the summertime, it can be nice if we're doing drills in the bay, it can be nice to have that ventilation. Uh, but it certainly wouldn't be, um, wouldn't be used this time of year if we could absolutely help it. Do you have just like a guess of or like what the incremental heat savings would be? Like what the heating bills are now? We've done just looking at the four hydronic heaters that are in each corner of the bay and spitballing <coughs> what the cost is to run them. The challenge is that they're hooked in with the rest of the uh, rest of the heating system, so uh, you can't really isolate it. But looking at the amount that they run, figure two or three hours to take the to take the truck bay from on a night like tonight, 10 degrees back up to 50, where we try to keep it. Um, the cost of oil being $2.23, 24 cents, what we just locked in, it's probably around $1,000 a year that we're spending to, uh, to rewarm the truck bay after we take the trucks out. Because the, the fan, we run the fan when we take the truck out, if we can. Uh, if it's a real emergency, sometimes that doesn't happen. Nobody has time to go to the, to the wall. Nobody walks by. But we always run it, bring the truck back in. So, you know, it's running for half an hour to an hour every time we uh, 
every time we go in and out. Sometimes that's once a day, sometimes that's three times a day. Meanwhile, it's probably not going to be as low as it is now for ever. Pro probably not. Um, and, and it is, you know, this is, this is one, of the, uh, one of the things that um, early on we identified as a great grant opportunity. And um, we inquired about it, but because of that NFPA requirement, at the time the station was built in 03, we're not eligible, at least through the NFPA, for a grant to put one in. So um, there may be, we, we certainly have some state grants for smaller amounts of money. Um, I'm actually pursuing one of those for another of the OSHA requirements uh, for our breathing air system, uh, for carbon monoxide monitor for that. Um, but it's uh, it's something that has been has been brought to my attention as an irritant for the folks working in the building that they can smell diesel exhaust. I'd be lying if I said I haven't had the same experience sitting in my office when the trucks are going in. Good, Scotty. Well, I was going to say, Mr. Chair, at, at nearly eighty thousand dollar price tag, and we've got a, a quote. I wonder if it doesn't make sense to put this out with a scope of work and ask for an RF, RFQ from multiple mm. uh, multiple sources. This isn't uncommon, whether it's a fire department or a, a new um, auto dealership maintenance bay. It's all the same stuff. My my fear is that as soon as it says fire, it costs more because it's cool and it's big red trucks versus just exhaust evacuation. It tends to be the and I, I see the, the, one, the one proposal we got is from, it's got all the monikers, you know, <laughs> service disabled veteran owned small business specializing in fire departments. All I see is more money. But there are also folks that could get us a quote in a timely manner. No, I totally get that. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm and, talking about the scope of services. That's all. We develop yes, that scope and then send it out. Yeah, there's nothing, there's nothing necessarily special about this firm or what they offer yep. that's unique. Right. Um, the only, um, the only different thing for the fire department versus an auto dealership just is the ease of disconnecting and some of that, sure. and the fact that the- um, You need to leave quick. Yeah, the hose is on a truck <clears throat> and it'll follow you. Yep. And then when the truck gets to the door, the hose breaks away. And, but again, there's no, uh, right. there's no magic in that. Got it. That's all, that's my only point. Think of you know a, a defined RFQ and then send it out for quotes. So and maybe it's a hundred thousand dollars. And who knows? But at least we have it. You already got the fan. We got the fan. <laughs> we'll just have to add duct work. Exactly. Well, it's a different kind of fan, but yeah. Why? You know why? Pour the plenum too. There you go. Right? It's all you Pour the plenum. Run it off the plenum. That was my only comment. I think the, the chief brings forward a, a need that you know it's, it's good for the staff that works there. That's you know fine. Go for it. When's the new truck coming? We are looking at just probably August. Is it just in time for the ventilation? Well, <laughs> <laughs> who knows? Um, but <laughs> we've. Uh, We've been, the, the communication's been hot and heavy on everything from confirming uh, control patterns to paint colors to uh, tires and all the little, the little back and forths. We are, um, we're only a couple of dollars with all the, the, the last minute changes and can we do this instead of that and fog lights, that fog light instead of that fog light. Um, we're, only a couple of hundred dollars over nice. what we had bid, and that may go away. Mm -hmm. And um, we're getting exactly what we had counted on. Good. Pictures ought to start rolling in probably April, yeah, first part sense. of April, because right now there's just you know a chassis that looks like everybody else's chassis. Mm -hmm. right. um, it doesn't take them horribly long to build these trucks, but the backlog was what had. Sure. Um, Given them such a such a lead time, so good. Uh, burning, outdoor burning starts soon. Outdoor burning has begun. Nice. Right on the fifteenth. So, 
get it while the snow is down. They actually, yeah, burn, burn now. It's my favorite time of year to burn. <laughs> that's right. Uh, it's a little cold, but that's okay. That's okay. Because you've got your fire. Warm me up. Stand and by it and warm up. That's right. Don't have to worry about anything spreading. Do it online. You can do your permits online, and it's uh, it's very easy. We just ask that you go on to um, the website fcburnpermits.com and fill out the form. You will be asked to print the permit, keep it with you, mm -hmm. and everything you need to know is right on there. It's really simple. Nice. No more than or no closer than 75 feet to a structure. Uh, having means of extinguishing the fire handy, whether that's a shovel this time of year with snow or a garden hose. Yep. Um, no building material, no garbage, uh, organic debris from cleaning up around your yard, no leaves uh, because they do tend to blow around. We've had a couple of scares in years past sure. with that. Uh, and also the hours of burning, um, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, kindly abide by those. Uh, it's not just something that I made up. It's something that not just the State Department of Conservation and Recreation made up, um, but the State um, Department of Environmental Quality oh, that makes sense. has a big say in that because there are concerns in some parts of the state with air quality. Mm -hmm. um, I won't say that we're not concerned with air quality, but there are some places, larger cities, where the air quality isn't as good as it is here. So they want to have burning only during certain hours and there are times when the state will shut burning off mm -hmm. and we have no control over that so the state calls up all the dispatch offices and says no burning today and there's no burning that day uh, it happens rarely but it can happen it's red flag warning days and stuff exactly and ironically enough it can be days like that or it could even be days uh, maybe like we're going to have on Thursday where it's rainy mm. and damp and foggy and in the in the fire fire business that's a great day to burn but <coughs> in the air quality business that's not a great day to burn because there's no mixing right. the um, the smoke stays in one general area good point okay anything else Stevie no thank Stevie, you very questions? much questions no I think I'm good any other score? No, it's great. I appreciate the okay. Chief's work. Thanks. All right, Stevie. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. Maybe not 100 percent, but thank you for coming in. Yeah. <laughs> it's 102 Fahrenheit. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Continuing on, um, board of selectmen updates. Uh, I can briefly, Mr. Chair. Uh, last week, the Frontier School Committee adopted the recommendations of the Capital Planning Committee, and I think the budget was sent out to all the participating cities and uh, municipalities. So we all should see, based on work by John Arcanian, uh, what <coughs> is going to be borrowed for, what is going to be assessed, and that is in the form of a, a detailed spreadsheet, including the impact across different uh, across the four different towns. Okay. And then uh, I'll hold off on an MMA update to our next meeting. But I would say, topically speaking, it was one of the better of the events I've gone to with respect to the seminars that were put on, particularly uh, important to our area were workshops on affordable housing, on OPEB funding, on uh, rights of way in the FCC. And uh, I would like to give a a note back, well, send an email back to the MMA organizers that that was one of the better full slates that they brought forward. They sent out a survey. Survey. Yep. Yep. All right. Mr. David? Yeah. 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 I'll, I'll just. I think, I think Frontier votes in that capital plan tonight. Was it tonight? Uh, you are correct. It is tonight. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Tonight. Tonight. Okay. Because it's Tuesday. At Frontier. We're usually Monday. At Frontier. That's why. We were supposed to go. We to have Conservation Commission downstairs as well. I was supposed to go to that one, but it's okay. Somebody's there, I'm sure. Yes. The camera's there. Good. That's See? important as well. Perfect. Because normally Anything? we're on Monday. So. Anything, Dave? Uh, just I second what Scott said about the uh, the MMA. Um, I got a uh, Union 38 <coughs> negotiation meeting tomorrow night, um, and then we've got our ditch stuff coming up. So. Nice. Yep. All right, Cherry Town Administrator. 
Um, just a couple of things. The street lights are in, so we're working with the um, contractor to schedule the install. Yeah. And there's a meeting at the FERCOG on the <clears throat> aggregation, and they're looking for representatives from the board and energy committee. That meeting's going to be on February 12th. 12th, yep. I could make it if Dave and I could both make yeah. it, I guess. We'll bring okay. a little posse up there. <laughs> All right. Um, FERCOG District Local um. Technical Assistance Program request. I have, I, I did not bring mine tonight. It's in the truck. I'll just give my marked up version to Sherry. So we That'd can be have. That'd good. He's looking for it by yeah. Friday. So. Yeah, I'll I'll send you. You can send me the. I'll send your. I'll send it tomorrow. Just like your top five. Okay. Oh wait, sorry, wrong book. All right. Um, appointment request for James Perot for Ditch Committee. So moved. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Congratulations. It should be a very, we um, review the ditch committee <clears throat> charge. David? We're going to dig deep into that. <coughs> so, <coughs> I kind of went over the last, um, mm -hmm. the, well, I really, because we kind of drafted it, we never actually got the committee going. Right. And I wanted to look at it because a lot of the stuff, when you go chronologically, we came up this charge, but then we ended up having a, the, that study done. So a lot of the things that the stud, that we had in the original charge did get addressed in the study. Mm -hmm. So I kind of wanted to take that <coughs> into consideration when coming up with a charge here. Um, and this was just a draft. I figured I'd sit down and try to come up with, you know, what we wanted on it. <coughs> And then the things that I thought were important to cover. So I tried to put in like a, a brief cause or need statement about why we're creating the committee. Um, do you want to read through it or? Um, no, I, 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 but I think that we should uh, send a copy to each one of the members of the, the ditch committee. Also, I would like to see their, uh, you know, I, 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 I would, I would, suggest that we vote on this tonight to get mm -hmm. it going yeah, right. so we can schedule meetings as soon as possible but then after your first meeting have have the committee take a look at at the thing and ask them if they have any recommendations sure. or changes then we can amend this mm -hmm. the only amendment i could mr chair is under the cause and need statement david mm. in the very beginning because of recent and historical issues i would just change of recent and just and remove all that i would say because of historical issues related yep and then at the end one of the deliverables on the on the mission and purpose mm -hmm. which i think is well thought out it should end with it should end and i appreciate the uh execution required easements rights of way that's going to take some time but invariably this is going to end up needing to be in a in a package for uh town submitted noi to the conservation commission mm. That's true. Yeah, that's really going to work that, with them. That's really going to be the end document. Is okay. Here's an here's our application for a bundled notice of intent. Yeah. I actually, put you're going to make a motion. Yeah. I, I, excuse me. Move, move to add under uh, mission and purpose under the clearly defined success an additional bullet that the output of the output of the committee's work should end with a bundled notice of intent to the conservation commission for review. That's a substantive. There's well, a there's a lot of there's a lot of work before that, but that's a substantive amount of work leading to a go or no go decision. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, because that's why I wanted to make sure that we yep. had, you know, we went into it knowing that yep. this is what our end goal was. And yeah. Oh, your bullets are under yeah. mission and purpose, I think, are, are super solid mm -hmm. and at clearly defined, you know, brief statement that ends with it. We really want to have this committee engaged, which I don't think is going to be a problem based nope, on its composition. Issue, right? uh, yep. should, should end up being understanding the regulatory yep. process as yeah, well. Because that's one of the big things. Right. Is the regulatory environment is different now than it was than in it years was. past. Correct. And I, Sherry, if you want, I can email you oh, this that would file. Be great. So then you can just yep. you know, do whatever you need to it. So I will we do have that. a motion made. Second. Motion made and seconded to uh, add, a, add a bullet under clearly defined success and that the, the, the SDC should 
uh, result, the SDC's work should result with an NOI, Notice of Intent, to the Conservation Commission. Right. And we started doing that. Yep. I remember. Yeah, we got right to it. Back. Yeah. Okay. We have a motion made and seconded. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay. We got three zero on the amendment, Sherry. Okay. We're all set with that. Um, special town meeting is Monday, January 28th at 2019 at 7 p.m. at the Sunderland Elementary School. Um, so next Monday night, we will be at the Sunderland Elementary School in our next um, outside meeting besides a town meeting well, special town meeting will be monday february 4th 2019 which will be done here highway department will be here for their budget presentation okay that's fine is there anything else no thanks yeah how about that thank you all right motion move to adjourn second Motion made and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Declare us out at 714.